Okay, so here we are. We're still in indeterminate, but we're now adding problems that may include heat. So this is our first example, and we're going to look at it, and it's kind of different because I don't have any um, applied external loads. Okay, I don't have any loads, but it says I'm going to need to determine average normal stresses. Okay, so I have red brass and aluminum. They're joined at a collar at B. They're fixed at their ends. If there is no load on the members when temperature 1 equals 50 degrees, determine the average normal stress in each member when it is 120. Also, how far will the collar be displaced? Cross-sectional is given. So this time, as we heat it up, both of these pieces are going to want to expand. They're going to want to stretch, but they can't. They're fixed. So the wall is going to have to be pushing it to keep it back in place, which kind of tells me that we're going to be developing some compression. So we're going to want to be stretching a positive delta because of tension, but then we're going to develop those forces at the wall that's going to push it back into place. So we actually will have a compressive force in here after all. It's just coming from the reactions at the wall from, from the heating it up. So we need to find our table and... When you go to your table, I had a table right here. I apologize. I get so excited. And then I, oh, here it is. Here's my other table that I was using. Um, when we have a table, then I can go to the red brass um, right here. And we are looking at feet. So I need to make sure I'm in the KSI. So I have red brass. And where are we? Right here. So when I'm looking at this, when I'm looking at the red brass, I have a modulus of elasticity of 14.6 times 10 to the third KSI. Always look up to figure out if there's any multipliers in your units. Red brass. Um, I have a yield stress of 11.4 KSI. So I always have to make sure I'm within yielding, whether it's tension or compression. Um, we don't worry about Poisson's ratio because we're not going to find changes, but I will need this coefficient of thermal expansion. And that looks like it is 9.8 times 10 to the negative sixth, okay, per degree Fahrenheit. So now we need to do the same thing for our aluminum. 2, 10, 14, where's that aluminum at? Right here at the top, easy peasy. 10.6 times 10 to the third KSI. It has a yield stress of 60 KSI, and it doesn't matter whether it's in tension or compression. That's important to note, because if it did, we'd have to make sure we included that. And then we have an alpha of 12.8 times 10 to the negative 6 per degree Fahrenheit. So um, we also were given cross-sectional areas, which is nice, and we have lengths. I'm going to go ahead and change this to 36 inches and 24 inches. Okay, so there are our givens. So let's think about what happens again. So as we start to heat up, we are going to start putting some forces in that bar. So let's start with what we always start with, which is equilibrium. Okay, I'm going to draw my bar. And I don't have any external forces in it as of yet, but I do know as I start to heat up, I'm going to get a force at the wall at C and a force at the wall at A. Okay, and now if I look to find out, okay, what force is going to be happening internal for A to B and B to C, then I can draw the force at A, and I'm going to have an internal force AB, and I can see that that's in compression, so it's going to be negative. And when I look over here, I'm going to cut it, and I have that force at C. I'm going to have that internal force of BC. If I sum forces in the x in the yeah x direction, I'm going to get that force BC equals force C. Force AB equals FA, and this is negative because it's also in compression. Now we're going to talk about deformation. So when I look at the deformation, what do I know has to happen overall with the deformation? Okay. 
I know that delta AB plus delta BC, at the end of the day, it has to be zero. It can't go anywhere. It, it, it just can't. So here's my deformation. Here's my equilibrium. Okay, now let's talk about what goes into that. If I look at the deformation, okay, when I look at this, I know that FA has to equal FC because some of the forces in the X direction equal zero. And the only thing we have is FA and FC. So that's kind of nice. That's super, super nice. Because now what I can say is, is that FAB equals FBC equals whatever that internal force is, and it happens to be negative. So that's beautiful. That gets rid of kind of two variables and makes it one variable. Okay, when I look at this deformation, it is going to come from both the force of the wall pushing it back in, that's going to be a compressive, plus the heating up, which is going to be an expansion. So let's 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 work on uh, on this part of our equation. So delta AB plus delta BC equals zero, but it's going to be coming from both compressive and um, temperature. So AB, when I look at AB, I'm going to have the force in AB, which I know is just the force, times the length of AB, area of AB, E of AB. And I know that's going to be negative because it's in compression plus, okay, alpha, remember, remember what it is, is delta due to temperature is alpha delta T length. So we have alpha for that first material, alpha AB delta T and length of AB, okay? This delta T, because it's always final minus initial, will give us that positive tension, 120 minus 50, positive value, okay? So now we have to go with plus, okay? We have that compressive force, force, negative, length BC, area BC, E of BC, okay, plus alpha BC, delta T, length BC equals zero. Now we can start going back and plugging in some values. So I have negative F times 36 inches divided by 1.75, and its E value is 14. 0.6 times 10 to the third, everything is in KSI in inches, plus alpha, we have 9.8 times 10 to the negative six uh, per degree Fahrenheit, times delta is final minus initial, 120 minus 50, times 36 inches, plus negative F, times 24 divided by 1.75 times 10.6 times 10 to the third. This is nice about having all of your data written down, okay? Plus alpha, so I have 12.8 times 10 to the negative six. Delta T, 120 minus 50 is 70 degrees Fahrenheit times the length of 24. And all of this madness equals zero. Put it over there since I ran out of room. So now I'm gonna get my calculator and we can see the un only unknown we have in here is F, which is a beautiful. So let's start simplifying. So I have 36, 1.75 divided by 14.6 e to the third divided by, and then I have 24. 1.75 divided by 10.6 e to the third divided by, those are both negative, so I'm going to add those up, okay, I'm going to add those up, and then I'm going to bring them to the left side of the equation, the left side of the equation, so I have 2.7028 times 10 to the negative third f equals, so I just removed the negatives, added them to the other side to isolate that F, and now I have 9.8 e to the negative 6, I have set times 70 times 36, 12.8 times e to the negative 6, 70 times, 24 times, and those are both positives, 
We're going to add those up. So we equal 0 0.0462. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this. So we're going to swap. We're going to make it a reciprocal. And we're going to multiply. And when I do this, lo and behold, my force equals 17.09 and my units are in kips. Okay, 17.09 kips. How cool is that? Okay, so I know that they're the same because using equilibrium, force A has to equal force C, which means the internal force of AB has to equal force A, this equals force C, but they're the same. So our stresses, for both of those are going to be 17.09 kips. So if I want to determine the average normal stress, so here's a beautiful number that we have. So if I wanted average stress in AB, it's going to be the force of AB divided by area of AB, which is, okay, 17.09 kips divided by 1.75 inches squared. 1.75 divided by and I get 9, 9.77 KSI. And I can see that that, yes, it is indeed yes, less than yielding. Perfect. We want it to be less than yielding. And now I can do the same thing with um, uh, BC. So this is AB. So stress of BC equals the force in BC divided by the area of BC equals 17.09 kips divided by 1.75 square inches is 9.77 KSI equals the stress in BC. Perfect. Is it less than yield? Yes. So now we have to find the displacement of collar B. So here's the question of the day. They have the same stress, okay? Do they have the same um, material properties? Like how does that even begin to work, okay? So let's look at delta B, okay? Delta B is either going to be, we're either gonna look at delta A to B or we're gonna look at delta B to C because one of these is going to be moving to the left or to the right slightly, the other will be complementing it. So let's just look at delta AB because that will give us the direction of the collar. Delta AB equals, okay, equals negative F, negative 17.09 times 36, divided by 1.75 times 14.6 10 to the negative third, okay, plus 9.8 times 10 to the negative six, times 70 times 36. Swap. Drop. So I have 17.9 change signs, 36 times 1.75 divided by 14.6 e to the third divided by, okay, 9.8 e to the negative six, 70 times, 36 times, plus, and I get a positive value. I get a positive value. Let's do that. Okay, so I get that delta AB, so delta B equals 0 0.611 times 10 to the negative third inches. It was positive, so it's going to go to the right. And how can I check that? Okay, I would expect then that this one is going also in that direction. Um, so let's go back up here. So I have 17.09, change signs, enter, okay? And that is negative, the length is 24. The area is 1.75 divided by, E is 10.6 E to the third divided by, okay? Plus alpha, 12.8 E to the negative six, 70 times, 24 times. We're going to add those up and look at that. I got a negative value, negative 6.07, which is, that's kind of close to 6.1. And um, 
it is negative, which means it is getting shorter. Okay, so it's getting shorter, which means if it's getting shorter, it is also going to the right. So that's how you can check your answers. And there you have it.